Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and in this video we're going to make a project, or I'm going to make a project, and I'm going to make a tool maker's clamp. That they, they look something like this, and they come in all different sizes, and uh, these two little ones are brown and sharp, that's a matching set. This appears to be uh, shop made, this is a Lufkin, and these are unmarked, but they're either Sterrett or brown and sharp, I'm not sure. But I'm going to make one that's basically modeled uh, after this one, which is a four-incher. Now, tool makers clamps are used in a machine shop uh, or any other place for that matter to hold your work on the little angle place for layout or, or wherever you might need a clamp. So this is what we're going to make, but the actual one I made a prototype will look like this. And I'm going to take you through this step by step, and this will probably be several part video because it's going to be pretty long. But here in uh, the 1942 Brown and Sharp catalog, you can see that they offered these in about five or six different sizes, and that uh, the largest size at that time was the three and a half inch, and that was about two dollars and thirty cents, which would be equal to forty bucks now, I suppose, inflation adjusted. So let's get on with it. There may be some of you that actually want to make this, but others just enjoy watching this and uh, vicariously having uh, fun uh, at their television set, but yet uh, watching a build, you may not have the machinery or even the desire to do this, but it may be uh, interesting to you, and I hope it is, if you stayed with me this long. Now, what do you need to, to make this? Well, uh, I'm going to use a milling machine, drill press, and lathe. And uh, you probably can get along without a milling machine, but it's just easier if you do. And as far as materials, this is half inch square stock, half by half, and it's uh, four inches long, two pieces of that. And this is uh, half inch round stock, and this is uh, screw machine stock, so it's free machining. It'd be nice if you would have free machining stock, but you don't have to. This one is made with 7 16 diameter. Well, where are you going to get 7 16 That's kind of an oddball, but I think it looks a little bit better with that diameter, but I'm going to use half inch. And these pieces are longer than uh, I need, but I like to have waist stock, so I got something to hang on to uh, when I do the threading, and uh, then I will cut the center holes off when I'm done. But you may want center holes on both ends, but that may be optional also. So I'm going to make the screws first. Work safely. Practice your safety rules at all times. Uh, wear your safety glasses, or if you're wearing prescription glasses, put your goggles on. But whatever you need to do, protect your greatest uh, uh, asset, and that's your eyes. Okay. Notice that uh, the stock is longer than, than I need because at some point I'm going to cut the center hole off and shorten that up. Also, uh, I've made the knurl extra long because uh, at some point I'm also going to chuck this onto the knurl and that damages the knurl. So that's going to be cut off also. It's, that's waste stock. So again, I'm starting with about five inches of, uh, of material. And the first thing we'll do is go over to the lathe and I've already center drilled one end, but uh, go ahead and, uh, or I'm going to go ahead and face and center drill this end. Now don't center drill too deep. If you center drill too deep, as we turn it down, the center a hole will uh, interfere with the other operations or it'll be in the way of the tool and you'll see that when I set this up in the lathe and start to turn this down. But first thing we'll do is face and center drill. I'm at the Atlas lathe with the work chucked up in my little three jaw chuck, the buck chuck, which you've seen in other videos, and I'm ready to face. finish is not very critical at all. It'll all be cut off. We're just trying to square it up. 
Now I'm ready to center drill and I'm using a number four center drill. And I'll only go about halfway up the tapered 60 degree portion of it. If you use a smaller center drill that would be fine other than the pilot on it is smaller and uh, there's a tendency to break them off and then you got a then you got problems. So here we go. Engage it slowly so it finds the true center. Where's my oil can when I need it? There we go. Now I'm ready to knurl. The knurling tool that I'm using uh, was demonstrated in uh, this video. Machine Shop Tips number 215. So take a look at that because I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. I do not recommend the so-called bump type of knurler. I just haven't had success with them at all. But you're going to have to, of course, use whatever tool that you have. And uh, you probably can get away without a knurl at all. Just drill a hole in there for your handle. But I'm going to allow one and a half inches for the knurl. So if you're having trouble knurling, that gives you a little uh, area to set your uh, knurling tool or to practice. But again, uh, remember that part of that is going to be for chucking later on and then cut off. So I've got that marked at inch and a half. I'm on the closing lathe and I'm running it at uh, 360 RPM and I'm going to use a power feed of 11 thousandths. And the, the uh, knurling tool is all set up, ready to go. Use plenty of oil. I want to flush away those chips. tool that I used was a medium a diamond and uh, that type of knurling tool is used on uh, a turret lathe. It's a brown and sharp. You've seen it in the other videos and uh, they work every time but try to get a hold of a, a pinch type of knurler. I guess you could call that brown and sharp a pinch type rather than a bump type. But take a look at these uh, knurls now how nice and crisp and sharp and how they come right to a diamond shape and that, that's what your neural should look like. That's if I can focus it. You see that? That's what you're looking for. It's hard to achieve with a bump type. Now I'm going to uh, knurl the other one off camera. Now that the knurling is completed, I'm going over to the Logan lathe where I've already set it up and I'm going to turn it down to 5 16 diameter, that's .312. I'm going to thread it with a die after they're turned down. That's a, a fine die, but you can use coarse, but I just think it looks better with a fine and you can change dimensions to whatever uh, tooling that you have. And I will turn it down uh, right into the knurl. So I still have plenty of knurl left. Remember this is waste stock out here and some waste stock here. But I'm going to allow three inches to be turned down. And uh, I have the lecture here of working on more than one lathe. Actually I'm using a total of three or four lathes so I can move from between lathes without uh, spending a lot of time to set up. Now you won't have that luxury probably unless you have several lathes. Some of you do. 
I suppose, but uh, don't worry about the finish because we're going to thread over it. So don't waste your time on finishes. We want uh, a square shoulder right here, reasonably square, and then I'll chamfer that with a file before I take it out of the lathe. Uh, and that dimension needs to be held, uh, you don't want it over 312, 0.312, but you can go a little bit under. Matter of fact, you might be better off a little bit under. It'll be easier to thread with your die. And I'm going to thread on the lathe with the die, not in the bench vise. This also is a good uh, project for you to single point thread if you desire on the lathe. But if you're going to do that, you'll need an undercut right here. So it's your choice on that but I'm using a die. I'm at the Logan lathe now and this is a perfect uh, project to turn between centers if you want and that's why I provided, provided a center hole there just as an example for people that want to hold that between centers but I'm going to hold one end in a chuck and the other end in my tailstock center and that tailstock center uh, is a live center. It's a concentric ball bearing type. I like it because it's so much more compact than this when I need to get into a, a small diameter so that's why I'm using that and that's also why I told you earlier to drill a shallow center hole so it isn't problematic now uh, for your tool getting in there you may also use a half center down here a half that's a dead center but that allows you to get in uh, to small diameters so those are just a few suggestions on your setup and I am using a carbide tool that I've got set, so it, it's going to give me a 90 degree corner, but there will be a radius left, and that really isn't a problem, and if it is, I will undercut it later on. So that's the setup, and I'm going to turn it in several passes, now again down to 0 .312. And this is nice free machining material, 12L14 is what it is, if I didn't mention that earlier. I already took a sample cut, but I've got my carriage stop set so that the tool will just barely come into the knurl. So I'll just bump up against that, but not under power. I'll hand feed it the last sixteenth of an inch or so. So let's give this a try. Quite a vibration in this lathe, as you can see. I think it's in the motor. And this is my finishing pass. I should be down to just a little bit under 0.312. And I'll also break this corner right here with a file on the neural. And again, we could care less about our finish. It'll all be hidden by the thread. And in fact, I am right on there. And see how much of a taper I've got, if any. Hey, virtually no, no taper. So the tail sock is set just right. Now, after I break that corner with a file, that's ready to take out. And it's, it's ready to, uh, to thread. Now, if you're going to thread by the single point method on the lathe, uh, do not take it out because you probably won't get it back in true. So that this would be the point where you would thread. But uh, I'm not going to, so I'm going to take this out and uh, step over to the other lathe and we're going to thread it with a die and I, I will do the other one off camera. I'm just about ready to start threading with the die. Now do not try to use, uh, 
a die holder like this in the vise because you're going to get a crooked thread. It has to be done on the lathe, and I'm going to do it on the lathe under power, but of course you could do it on the lathe uh, manually also, but that would align you and assure you of a straight thread. And that racket that you hear uh, above me here in the, is my one-year-old uh, grandson uh, pounding on the floor with a toy. But uh, I like the larger inch-and-a-half dies over the little ones there, so that's what I'm using. Notice that they usually say start from this side, so that's the side that has to be out toward uh, the work because it is tapered. I'm going to hold this in the headstock, in the three-jaw chuck, and I'm going to hold the work in the tailstock in a Jacob's chuck. So let's go over to the lathe, and this will be the claws and lathe. And I will use back gears, slow speed, plenty of oil. I filed a bit of a chamfer on here to aid the die in starting. Plus, of course, I'm starting from the tapered side. Now, in the past, uh, when I'm threading shorter pieces, I would use this type of die holder, and I would hold uh, the die in here and the end of it in the uh, the Jacob's chuck. But notice that this hole does not go all the way through, so I can only thread something that's about two inches long in here. And that's why I reversed it, and I've got the die in the lathe chuck. Now, this is a round adjustable split die, so I've got the little set screw set such that the force of the three-jaw chuck doesn't crimp it closed uh, so that I will thread undersize. I hope you understand what I mean by that on an adjustable die. Some dies are not adjustable, such as, uh, as this one. So I don't have to worry about it getting collapsed a little bit. All right, I'll put the machine in back gears here and I'll be ready to go in a minute. The tailstock must be free to slide easily, unlocked, and I've got oil on the ways. Don't ram the, uh, the die with that and I'm ready to go. I'm going to use plenty of oil. I'll push the tailstock in and apply pressure until it starts. better off squirting the oil in there. Every once in a while I put the machine in reverse to break the chips and I clean out the little holes here in the die to get the chips out of there. And it's ready to go again. Come up to the shoulder very slowly, or you will twist off the work. Now this is how I come up to the shoulder, very slowly, but I have a clutch on this lathe, so that helps me. And that's as far as I'm going. I'm going to put it in reverse. I'll thread the other one off camera, but taking a look at this one now, I've got a fine thread nut on there and it fits just fine. This end has to be cut off. Now here's how to deal with uh, the unthreaded portion, because remember that the die is tapered, where it says start from this side. So I can run the die, reverse the die, and run the die over uh, close to the shoulder, and that's going to take care of some of that. Or I can put it in the lathe and undercut that with a parting tool. Or, uh, thirdly, and I hope to mention it again later, is to uh, counterbore 
the hole that it goes into, which I think I, I did on this one earlier. So that's three ways to take care of the, the way the thread terminates. And you're going to have that problem if you uh, single point thread it as well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to drill the cross hole. And I'm going to use a jig for that. Next, I'm going to drill this cross hole, and that's 3 16 diameter. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do this. And in fact, this is a pretty easy way to spoil your work and ruin the whole project and get discouraged and quit, uh, is to drill a cross hole. I've got a whole video on that, but I'm using a jig here, which is my favorite method. Now, the other thing is it's most difficult to do a layout now on the neural. And I want that, uh, that hole to be about 5 16 from that shoulder. And I'm using a paint marker to, to locate that. So you can see the white mark is, in fact, my, uh, uh, my spot where I want to drill that hole. And again, that's not very critical. The most important thing is that both of these uh, look about the same, so you don't see a discrepancy between the two. Now let's set it up on the drill jig, the Heinrich drill jig. Now let's face it, nobody's going to have one of these. They cost $500. But I've got the 3 16 drill bushing in there installed already, and they just uh, slip in there. And the very reason that I allowed extra neural here, or extra length, was that so I could hold it in this, uh, this fixture here, as well as to hold it in the chuck. And remember, this is all waste stock, and it's already uh, been damaged by the chucks. But what I'm going to do now, and this lifts up and down, I will lay it in the little V-way here, and I'm going to shine my flashlight under there and look right down the bomb site here until I see the white mark, and then take the Arkansas socket wrench, tighten it up here, and then also this tightens it down, and I'll just take it over to the drill press and drill it 3 16 all the way through, and that centers that hole just perfectly. And here it is on the drill press. And I just float this around until it aligns. It would be nice to clamp it down, but it's such a heavy fixture, just a good uh, handhold, and it's not going to go anywhere. And I'll drill that off camera. 3 16 And there it is, a perfect cross hole. Now, since you do not have a Heinrich drill jig, I'm sure, take a look at my video called uh, Drilling Cross Holes, I believe is the title, and it'll show you some alternative ways of doing this, because if you drill off center, in other words, off like that, it just looks terrible. It just ruins the entire appearance of the project and it looks amateur. So, so use one of the methods so that you get a, a nice hole. And then there's going to be a bit of a burr there that I will remove with uh, my countersink. And I'll do the other one, of course, off camera. If you look at the two different screws here, they're not exactly the same. So I need to locate uh, the hole in the other one in a slightly different uh, position. Notice here that uh, I have a keeper here, or whatever we're going to call it. That can be made in two different ways, but and I'll get to that later. But I need a groove here, and the groove is going to be 1 16th inch wide. I'm going to do that with a cutoff tool, a parting tool, and I've got 1 16th of an inch of knurl right here. Then I need to locate this hole, 5 16 from there, drill it, and then this needs to be cut off. So right now I'm going to make this groove in this piece, and I'm going to use uh, this 16 inch wide parting tool. You may need to sharpen one to that width or whatever width you're going to use for this little keeper. And uh, I may use a, a thinner keeper here in, in the final one. So. Stay with me on that, but for now, let's go over to the lathe and, and uh, put this groove in. Here's my setup for grooving. Notice that again I'm held in a three-jaw chuck here on the waist stock, and I'm supported by a center here. That's a live center, spring-loaded. Now, uh, it's hard to locate this here because you can't really put a layout mark. And I Again, I wanted that groove to be 1 16th from the shoulder here, so I'm just using a 16th inch bit here as a gauge and eyeballing it and that'll be close enough. Now the only thing I've got to worry about here is the depth of the groove and I'm using my little Sterrett 
spring caliper here and that's set for 3 8 I just uh, set that on a drill bit the shank of a drill bit so it's set for 3 8 and I will just uh, proceed to groove to the depth until that fits over the work and that can be used with the machine running it and that depth isn't very critical at all. The groove is complete and now I've laid out the hole and I'll drill that cross hole off camera but I think you can understand now why I needed a different length here to incorporate this groove. These two screws are just about done and what I'm doing now is I'm cutting off the neural at the correct uh, length and I want the neural portion here to be uh, 5 eighths on each one. So I've marked that. You can see the mark, the white mark. And I'm sawing it off. I'll saw that one off too. And that's just about, I think, ready to come off. Yeah. Now I'm going to put this in a either a three-jaw chuck or a collet and face that off and chamfer it. Now what I didn't mention is that uh, this neural, of course, is damaged by holding it in the chuck. Although it sure doesn't show up much there, but it, it's not in good shape. And you see I'm throwing the center hole away. But in the school shop, to protect neurals and threads or whatever the kids were going to hold uh, in the uh, three-jaw chuck, we often cut pieces of lead. I used to have a huge quantity of this from when they put the power plant up here. Just cut this into strips and wrap one wrap around to protect it. And we did it with copper too. So either one of those are a solution to uh, preventing damage to a thread or a neural or a delicate part. I'm now with the hardened speed lathe or second operation lathe and with a 5 16 collet installed and gripping the, uh, the thread and it will not in any way damage the thread or, or put a mark on it because it, uh, it grips all the way around. And uh, with a facing tool here, I'm just facing it off to length so that it's 5 eighths long. And then I'll chamfer it with a file. And it is quite a luxury to have a, many different lathes. This is lathe number four that I've been working on today. And I'll measure it with a rule until I get it exactly three quarters long. There they are, almost done, faced, nice chamfer on there, and the chamfer really makes a finished look, so make sure you do that with a file. Now they are not the right length, so let's deal with this one first, the one with the groove, and it needs to be two and three quarters long, approximately, and that isn't all that critical. So you can see here I'm, uh, I'm at three, so I think I'll just face that off to that length. I can saw a little bit off or face it. So I'm going to put it back in that hardened lathe in the collet held like this with just a little bit uh, sticking out and I'm going to uh, face it off so I'm at two and three quarters and I won't show that. A few moments ago on the hardened lathe over there I told you that this uh, neural should be three quarters long. In fact it's, it's five eighths long so I contradicted myself. So uh, that's what that one looks like. Now, let's see. Not that one. All right, that's what this that one looks like that I faced off, and I got just a little residue of the center hole left in there, but nothing to be ashamed of. But that one is finished. Now the other one is just a little different because it needs to be turned down on the end, and it also is going to be two and three quarters long, and then I'm going to turn this down to thirteen sixty fourth diameter which is just a little over 3 16 and about 3 16 long. And I'm also going to do that 
in the uh, Hardin's lathe held in a collet. This is just to illustrate how, uh, how nice it is to hold work in a 5C collet and you can put it in from this way, this direction, and just allow however much uh, to stick out that you want and that's about what I'm going to work on so that it doesn't bend uh, or break, break off or get damaged. And again the collet does not damage the thread. And there it is. The end of that is uh, again 1364 diameter which is about 0 0.203 and the length of the little step there is 3 16 and I champ for the end of it and that piece is uh, done and are ready to take out. Okay the two screws are finished and ready to be used and I hope there's some shop teachers out there that might use this as a project uh, in their classes because this would would uh, supplement the blueprint and all the instruction that you give them and maybe uh, for individual instruction if somebody gets behind this would be helpful I don't know but this is how these work if you've never used these similar to a Jorgensen hand screw but Jorgensen hand screws have a, a right and a left hand thread so the construction is a little bit different Well that concludes part one of this video on the screws and in part two I'll make the two uh, square parallel bars out of this material and uh, be sure and watch both parts and I'm, I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next part.